Check this out, y'all. This is what we're doing today. We're still down south. The weather looks pretty good. So they're hooking up this hoist to the boat. This is a 23 foot Parker, 250 horsepower motor on the back. Hooking it up, bringing it down to the dock. There she goes. That's a 23 foot Parker going out into the ocean from this huge hoist, huge lift. Pretty damn cool, man. Never experienced anything like this. Man, that's awesome. You don't have to get your trailer salty with all this ocean water. Just launches straight like that. All right, man, welcome aboard. Boat's called Pound Town. We're gonna go out here and do some fishing. So the safety briefing is, um, first off, fire extinguishers right here. Um, I'm gonna finagle it a little bit more and put it put it in its normal spot. It's kind of just thrown there. Um, there's a throw ring there. There's also another two square throws that we were using the other day. They're behind the cutting board. Um, I have a marine radio here. I don't have my ditch radio, but we do have this one if I got a call for help and give coordinates. Life jackets here, and then there's more under that cushion in a compartment. The pole inflatable, and a couple more regular life jackets up under here. Launch the Parker out of port slow today. Fishing with Tim and Vince from Jurassic Sport Fishing Club. It was a lot rougher when we got out here than we were anticipating, and it stayed like that. What reel is that? Yeah, stall. You like it? Oh yeah, I've had it for seven years. That's a, like a $600 reel, isn't it? Yeah, but I have beat the absolute shit out of it. It's brand new. Used it for a vertical jigging in Japan. Got some pretty big tuna with it. Really cool guys, and even though the drift was fast, we were still able to manage some bottom fish. Oh, fun nice stuff. Johnny, dude. Oh, that's that a, good a nice Johnny. olive rock fish. What do you got? Probably the same, huh? No, ling cod, nice. Vince caught a keeper ling on the first drop, but yeah, it was it was a little bit slow just because the drift was so fast. We ended up finding a nice school of blue rock fish. So while we had the opportunity, we loaded up on them. And it was funny, we were talking about how some people think vermilion tastes great, other people think cabazon tastes great. So every fish was like, does this one taste better? Does that one taste better? Do you guys think one rockfish tastes better than the other? Or do you think that all rockfish are basically the same in taste? Interesting to hear other people's thoughts. So we were getting the blues left and right, but I wanted to try to catch a big fish, a lingcod. So I went with the eight ounce jig head, the red and white swim bait. That was a killer for me before, but it wasn't working. So I tried to go with something lighter this time, four ounce jig head and a five inch green pumpkin. How often does that not get bit? Well, it didn't get bit that day. We moved to a more calm, protected spot, but even there it was rough. You know, we came out here, I took a couple pills, and uh, I, feel, I feel good, but I kind of trained myself. It's like running with ankle weights or something. A couple times we've been out to the Fairlawn Islands. It's a three hour run out there, and it's like torture. Now, coming out here, it's a 45 minute run out to the spot. So in the past, I used to think that that was a long run, but now, piece of cake after coming out from the Fairlawn Islands, so really want to get into offshore fishing like this do a couple hard trips then when you start doing the average trip it's gonna be easy good amount of fish we got there let's see one two three four five six seven eight. 17 18 so far for only fishing a couple hours we ended up with about three limits of rockfish which ain't too bad ain't too bad at all but it was just too rough we could only manage heading back to the harbor about 15 miles at nine knots per hour or so and yeah it was a wet ride luckily we had the pilot house thanks again tim vince it was a great trip i'm gonna be back down there real soon for some pocket fishing at these low tides so stay tuned for those videos. This is gonna be very interesting. I'm a little bit more prepared. I'm about to thread this rope through the fish to close it up. And I've tried the experiment one time, but now it's crunch time. Now is the real t test. So I got two of these blacks that I caught with Vince and Tim. Thank you guys so much for inviting me out. 
and also Rodney. Thank you. Oh, what's that? Look at that goo coming out of his mouth. That's gross. But two bl two blues, two blue rockfish. I'm gonna scale both of them and then fillet it, and then put some cheese on the bottom of the middle. Put some bacon on top. Put some more butter in there. Cover that with cheese, and then thread the two fillets shut. First thing I'm gonna do is just scale it so when I eat the whole thing like a sandwich, I don't have a mouthful of scales. So let us begin. Easy. Other side. Just as easy. I wanna save as much meat as possible, and I don't wanna puncture the guts. Meat looks nice and clean, so I'm gonna do a fillet both sides. Couple pin bones there. Then we're gonna go right along the rib cage. So we don't puncture any guts and we also keep the belly meat. All right, there's one piece. Looks good, right? Got two pieces of meat. The only problem is it's thicker in the middle. So what I'm gonna do is carve out the middle and make a bowl shape, carve out some of the meat inside so we can hold something. There's pin bone and there's probably, I don't know exactly how many, but there's a bunch of them and just like a salmon, if you wanted to keep this filet whole, just spend a little extra time, you could pick out all the pin bones. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Next thing I'm gonna do is get some bacon cooked and I'm gonna use all the fat from the bacon. That's gonna be my cooking medium. Who doesn't like bacon? Now I've got some salt, pepper, garlic. I'm just gonna season the outside of this. A little on the inside. Nice, nice, nice. You know, I'm sitting here actually trying to warm up next to this fire too, but it's probably not a good idea. All this grease is popping in my eyes. I'll just warm up my hands. It's getting there. All right, we got smell of vision Check it out. How does that look? Oh yeah, I think that's done. Perfectly crisp, perfectly brown. Still a little fat in the bacon. Now let's put this on our clean surface. We have our pan filled with bacon grease. Now I'm gonna to try to put it in an area where it doesn't get any fog in it because all the water that's getting into it is making it pop. Now, where's our cheese? Cheese, you say? Yes, cheese, I got mozzarella cheese. People don't like fish with cheese, I don't know why. I, it's good to me, nothing wrong with that. I've never had an adverse reaction to it. I got a bunch of it, I'm gonna sprinkle it down on this fish here. Now originally I had crab in this dish, but I don't have any crab today. So what I'm gonna do is just put a ton of cheese right over the top here. And my original idea was that this cheese would melt and anything that was inside that you didn't want to get out, it would stay in there. Now let's throw our bacon bits. One more piece of bacon, okay, awesome. Now before we end that, let's take our brick of butter and put a couple slices in it just for the heck of it. So we're gonna take our block of butter, just cut off a nice sliver. We're gonna put it in. So one there, and we'll do another one right on top. Now, of course, we can't just seal it like that, right? We gotta have some more cheese. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? I mean, some might say no, but I'm gonna say yeah. So we'll put the topping Oh, now look at that. Look at that fish sandwich, y'all. Ooh, push it down so it doesn't move. And now, the fun part. Let's get our threader and start sewing it up. It's actually easier to thread it than I thought it was going to be. Voila, what do you think? What do you think? I think it looks pretty damn good. What you know about that, huh? What you know about that thing right there? You ever had one of these? That's what I'm talking about, man. Stuffed, boneless, 
fish threaded fillet. And I want to cook it at a slow temperature, low temperature. That way it's not going to crisp up the skin and break it apart. I hope. I need a brick. Let's find a rock first and we're going to use that to hold it down, keep it flat. Perfect. Nice and slow, all right? We're going to cook it slowly. Very, very slowly. All that cheese is starting to melt nicely. Check this out, y'all. Let's see how it turns out on this side. Success, I would say. Hell yeah. This is what it came from. And this is what it turned into. A cheesy bacon stuffed butter filled mess that looks delicious. Gonna let that fish cool down and enjoy the rest of this bacon. <laughs> oh man, look at that. Look at that. Stayed together. This actually turned out way better than I was expecting. And things cool down fast as heck out here, so I'm gonna eat this while, I, while it's still warm. Oh man, this is gonna be good, I already know it. Mmm, the string tastes good. Got the cheese on it, wow, that's good. If it was stuffed with crab, how I originally had wanted, that would be even better. This thing is a funny little fish sandwich. Damn y'all, reminds me of a pizza. I guess there's, there's no reason why you couldn't just cook the fish and then the cheese and then the bacon and put it together, but it just looks so cool like this. Maybe, I don't know, Taku, maybe you could think of another way, another take on this, but this is damn good. Again, thanks Tim, thanks Vince. Check them out, Jurassic Sport Fishing Club on the Central Coast. See you guys on the next one. Let me know what you think about this. Would you guys do this? Looks damn good. It's, it is damn good, man. I'm gonna kill this, head back to the car now. Later, y'all. Mm -hmm.